The one question I want you to ask yourselves while you're uh, watching and listening to this broadcast is, who are your everyday heroes? And what would it take for you to become an everyday hero? Are you doing everything you can to be an everyday hero for somebody else. That's the theme of the show. That's why we're all here. And we're here to showcase the uh, the everyday people doing extraordinary things. So in that vein, we have Stephen Dater coming up here in segment number one. Now, he's been donating blood for the last 30 years and saving lives in the process. We're going to talk to him about the process of giving blood, what's involved, and how you can do it as well. Now, in segment number two, we're going to talk to Gail Nyberg from the Toronto Daily Bread Food Bank. She's the executive director, and she is championing the epidemic of hunger here in Toronto. And again, the question is, what can we all do to help this problem? In the studio now is a distinguished guest, Stephen Dater. Stephen, thank you for coming by today. Now, many people know you and your family as great entrepreneurs in uh, in Canada here. And, of course, you have Dater's Fresh Food Market right on Bathurst Street, just south of the 401. Now, you've been there for many years. But what they probably don't know about you, Steve, is that you are a longtime blood donor. And uh, so how many – you've been what's close to 300 times now. That's an amazing thing. Now, we, we were talking before the show, you know, when you talk about blood – Mm-hmm. Blood donating. It's something that makes, you know, people get a little squeamish, right? I mean, the word kind of evokes uh, an awkward kind of response, right? For a big part of people, but uh, overall, I try to encourage people to go. I've had people come with me. Uh, I think it's a very valid, good thing to do. Absolutely, absolutely. But what is it about? You know, how do we first get over that awkwardness, that initial awkwardness about about giving blood? Like, what do we... Uh, I think it's an individual thing, but, uh, you know, I tell people, just kind of go, relax. Uh, I find you just feel a little pinch when they, you know, go to take the blood from you. And it's I find it's a, actually a relaxing thing. It takes less than an hour from the time you walk in to the time you leave. And I find it's really not a big deal to, to go, but it means so much. It does mean so much. And, and uh, you know, I called the uh, Canadian Blood Services. That's what it's called now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I asked them and I said, you know, here's a guy who has given, you know, close to 300 donations mm-hmm. over the span of 30 years of his life. This mm-hmm. is incredible. And I said, how do you how do you quantify the impact of that? And, you know, the guy said to me that it is very, very possible that you have, in fact, saved not one, but two, not one, two, but, you know, many, many lives, mm-hmm. you know, between 10, he said, you can guess between 10 and 20 lives of those 300 donations. Well, they say, they, they claim, uh, the blood services claim that you could save up to three lives on one donation. Right. So that's, that's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of lives saved. Yeah, so that's an incredible thing. So, so, mm-hmm. so, so, tell me, how did you get into this? I mean, what, what prompted well, this? Well, I kind of grew up with my father, my mother, my brother. They're all, you know, giving blood, and uh, <clears throat> I've been giving since I've been seventeen years old. I'm over fifty now. But when I started to question after, and I've given quite a few times, then I found out during my mother's pregnancy with me. Uh, she ran into complications and she mm-hmm. needed some, don- you know, some uh, transfusion. So that's what got them started. And I just started to follow it along and never gave up. That's amazing. That's amazing. So so walk us through the process then, you know, from the moment you, you get to the Canadian Blood Services. You know, give us an idea of, <laughs> you know, in actuality what's happening because we want to dispel any of the myths if we in misconceptions here because right. there are many. They're not... Uh, cutting off any limbs no and nothing uh, like that actually uh it has changed throughout the years but the procedure is now you kind of go in uh you show the card the first time will probably take you a little longer because they have to you know test your blood see what type of blood you are 
but uh, which shouldn't take too long. But for myself or a regular donor or anyone that's given prior, you go in, they uh, check, they take just a little drop of blood out of your finger, they check your iron count, if it's acceptable, then you fill out a questionnaire. The questionnaire is just uh, certain questions, have you been out of the country, etc., etc. ever given blood under a different name. And once you complete that questionnaire, you go and you see a nurse uh, after the, you know, it's very private actually in a separate office. They check your temperature, blood pressure. She'll go over the questions quickly. If everything's up and up, then off you go. You just, uh, I go to a permanent clinic over at Hillcrest Mall. Uh, you just lay down, you relax, or they actually have upright chairs, like easy boy type of chairs. And I just relax and probably takes me 15 minutes to actually give the blood or 10 minutes. Then after you get a little treat, coffee or juice and cookies, and uh, you know I'll socialize Treats, there a little milk bit. Milk and cookies. Now hey, you're. It's all good. It's I might. All good. I might have to consider this after all. <laughs> that's that's. Hey, part what of the about benefits. what about? Hey, here's an idea. What yes. about getting daters? What about you guys actually supplying? The fresh food for these clinics. You know what? It's very light. It's very <laughs> light. Uh, usually some of the big companies will donate cookies, you know, yeah, Oreo yeah, yeah. or Dads or things like that. But I'm telling you something, yeah. Steve. If you guys get your, uh, you know, your fresh produce at yeah. these clinics, I yeah. mean, it's going to, business is going to grow 10. <laughs> probably would. Probably Tenfold. Right. <laughs> tenfold. Closing here. Yes. How do we get? Yes. How do we get? Mm -hmm. everyday people to understand how vital it is to give blood and just and and how intrinsic it is to mm -hmm. saving lives and how easy it is to do how do we do that before we go well i think it's like everything else i think until it hits close to home mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. where people have a little bit of a uh, reality check and so many people do need blood they say uh Approximately every one minute, someone in Canada does need blood. And, you know, and unfortunately, I've had family members that have to have blood. And God forbid, if you don't have the blood, you're in trouble. So it's, I think it's just extremely important for somebody to go out there and, you know, donate a little bit of your time, donate a little bit of your blood, and just... You know, as the saying goes, thing. as the saying goes, it's in you to give. Mm -hmm, 100%. And uh, I think that pretty much says it all. I know Jody, my my uh, producer here, is going to get our, our PSA ready to play. And we have an amazing public service announcement, which really conveys the message we're talking about. But I just, you know, before we do that, I just wanted to say to you that, uh, you know, it's a great pleasure to have you in the studio today. And you really are. You know, we have researchers who spend their days, uh, you know, going through uh, the internet and, and, and magazines, and newspapers, and, and we're trying to find legitimate everyday heroes that people can be proud of. And you're certainly one of them. And we certainly thank you for all of your efforts and uh, with the Canadian, you know, blood services and all of your other charities, which are numerous that we don't have time to mention right now. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen Dater, thank you so much for coming in Eden. on Everyday Heroes. Eden, it's my pleasure. And uh, hopefully I've encouraged some people to go out and put their arm out and... It's in you to give, as you say, as their logo is, and I think it's a fantastic thing to do. Well worthwhile. Thank you, Stephen. We're going to now go to our first PSA of the day for blood services, and here it is right now. Thanks for being here. In the time that it takes for me to check my Facebook, I can save somebody's life by donating blood. In the time it takes me to watch a mediocre American sitcom. Watch Seinfeld take my lunch break, walk my dog a couple blocks, do the dishes, walk to work. I could save someone's life by giving blood. People always ask me why I donate blood. I'm like, one word, chocolate, old-fashioned donuts. <laughs> because I want to get to the cookies. In the time it takes me to take a shower, I could save someone's life by giving blood. You stole mine. <laughs> <laughs> In the time it takes me to um, Pick up the newspapers from the living room and take them out to recycling. Shoot a game of pool. To commute to work. Drive to the corner and do a little shopping. Take my son to soccer practice. In the time it takes me to uh, put my makeup on, I could save someone's life. I'm empty. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay.
Joining me now on the phone is the Executive Director of the Toronto Daily Bread Food Bank, Gail Nyberg. Gail, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Now, you know, we're dealing with the problem of hunger uh, here in Toronto, which, you know, it's amazing. I was asking people, you know, what, what, are, what, are, what are we doing? And so many people weren't even aware uh, the, of the epidemic. It, well, you know, it's been a very serious problem here in Toronto for a very long time. But since the fall of 2008, it really has, has grown to a point that I thought, I, I actually can't believe. Uh, an 8% increase in the year 2008 to 2009, and then a 16% increase from 2000 and 2010. And to put that in perspective, that's 123,000 extra client visits. So, you know, an epidemic is a good word for it right now. Okay, Gail, so, so what do we need to do? Uh, to, you know, what can we do to try to proactively deal with this problem? You know, the issue, the issue is not lack of food. And let's, be per, uh, let's be clear of that. There's lots of food in Canada. There's food in grocery stores. The <laughs> yeah. issue is lack of money to buy food. And, you know, I felt, I felt in, the, <clears throat> in the years 2004 to 2007, we really made some progress with, with the Ontario Child Benefit, with some increases in social assistance, uh, with, uh, you know, well, uh, child benefits nationally. And many people were starting to lift out of poverty. But since the recession, we've fallen back, and people continue to be so poor that they can't af- afford to buy food. So I'm really hopeful during both the federal and, and, and the provincial election that we can focus on the issue of poverty and hunger and, and putting money in the hands of people who, who are low income so they can purchase food. Because food banks are a t- temporary measure. They, they are not the answer. Okay, just in closing here, Gail, we appreciate your time very much. And and for the average person, you know, sitting at home right now, and they want to know what precise steps can be taken today, right after this show, to go and make a contribution to the hunger situation in Toronto. Well, <clears throat> I think the really easy way, if they want to donate money, is to go on to our website, dailybread.ca. And we can use that money to make sure that we purchase food or deliver food to, to local food banks. They can buy food in their local grocery stores, in the Loblaws, in the Metros, in the Sobeys, and leave it in the bin. We'll pick it up. They can buy food or get food from their cupboard, and they can take it to any fire hall across, across the GTA. The fire halls collect food for us all the, all the time. And, you know, we have some elections coming up, and I would suggest to them they need to listen very carefully to what the party platforms are and listen very carefully to the politicians that knock on their door and ask them what they plan to do about hunger and poverty in their community. Okay, that's Gail Nyberg, the Executive Director of the Toronto Daily Bread Food Bank. You know, we want to thank you very much, Gail, for all of the work you're doing on behalf of the hunger and poverty situation in Toronto, and we wish you best of luck. Thanks again. We are seeing more and more people who are in a greater need for food. I think the mix of the clients are very different. We have people who have college educations, who in the past would have been donors to our program, who would have come and actually worked in the back and volunteered in our program, who are now finding themselves in a place because of unemployment being so high here. They are the ones that now are in need. I, I was having a hard time making ends meet because I w- found myself on my own as a single parent and uh, my income went way down. My husband got sick and needed to be cared for so I stayed home and took care of my husband and we became homeless during that time. I found myself in a place where I wasn't able to provide for my children and all of their basic needs. It's kind of depressing when you look in the cupboard and you see one can of soup and a peanut butter jar is almost empty. And you still have a week to go. To try and calm a hungry child and get them to go to sleep so that they don't feel hungry um, is terrible because you are so overwhelmingly filled with guilt that your child is hungry. Um, All you want to do 
is feed them because you know that will solve the problem. But to not have food is not, it's, it feels terrible. The Oregon Food Bank is an organization that collects food for agencies like myself to be able to distribute to clients. If a person is hungry, they would come to our site, receive a food box. The Oregon Food Bank makes it possible for us to be able to have access to foods that we wouldn't normally be able to get on our own. It was an enormous relief to be able to go in and get a food box because I knew that my kids weren't going to go hungry that night. It gives me great peace of mind to know that the Oregon Food Bank is there to give me a helping hand when I need it. We wouldn't be able to do the things that we do or the quality of what we do if it wasn't for our relationship with the Oregon Food Bank. I felt like I was the only one in my situation. When you feel alone, you feel like you're outcasted. But when you realize that there's other people that have similar needs, it kind of eases the pain, eases your heart. And no one prepares for a time when they can't provide for their children. Um, we were glad that Oregon Food Bank had planned for a day when we couldn't provide for our children, because we certainly didn't see it coming. The Nutrition Education Program is a really good service, especially for young families, for families that might not have known how to cook like that before. My daughter is learning to like the foods I'm making for her. The best thing is probably when I uh, include her in the preparation of the foods. I had gotten a really good cookbook uh, from the Nutrition Education Program and I'll show her some of the different uh, recipes and, and let her choose what we're going to cook and fix together and get her involved with the chopping, helping me with preparing. She still will stick up her nose to it a little bit, but I'll let her know that it's healthy stuff and this is really good for her to eat just by donating some food or donating your time for an hour, even though it may seem so simple and irrelevant, that it may touch on two people. And if it touched on two people, it could touch on 10 people or 100 people. You just don't know sometimes how things will evolve. Gosh, when I am helped by other people, it's humbling. It, may, it touches your soul that people have so much love for you. and. Um, it makes you want to help other people. Anytime someone is helped in something that is most basic, I think it turns on a switch that everybody has that says, we're all part of a greater community and I can help. And I've been helped, so now I want to turn around and help. Each show is, uh, you know, it's a learning experience for me. And I said at the beginning of the episode to, you know, to think about, you know, who are your everyday heroes and, and how are you going to be, you know, an everyday hero to somebody else in their life? I want to thank my guest, Stephen Dater, um, you know, really inspiring guy who's giving blood uh, on a regular basis. And uh, he filled us in about the process. Uh, Gail Nyberg, executive director of the Toronto Daily Bread Food Bank. Thank you, Gail. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. Same time. Thanks for being here. I see that I hear